Uh, the NBA draft just passed, of course, and uh, we've talked about the fact that Trey, Trace Jackson Davis, Jalen Huchifino, and uh, uh, oh, daggone, Race Thompson all uh, uh, having opportunities. Romeo Langford uh, just it was just announced. Thanks, Craig, that uh, the Spurs did not tender a qualifying offer to him. He's now a free agent, um, and we were kind of talk. I was talking with Bob Kravitz earlier about. You know, he when he was at Indiana his one year, he was able to get to the rim, and that was his his uh, mo. And I don't really know where else he excelled at, and and what he's been able to really make better uh, with his time in the league to ex to extend his time there. Um, where we look at Jalen Jafino, you know what he offers, what what he is going to bring. Uh, he's going to be a certain type of player, but Romeo's kind of a, a man, a standalone type in in this age. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I um, uh, while we were talking, I, I pulled up his his five thirty eight player projection profile, and if if you look at you know, just kind of the the different kind of numbers, like he's. He's kind of league average ish for his position in like height weight. Um, you know, if, if you look at, I mean, he's he's really low percentile wise in terms of his his shooting percentages and and kind of just like his true shooting percentage, um, his free throw percentage. So you can't really pigeonhole him as a you know a, a three point specialist or something like that. About the only thing he really really excels at um, relative to his peers is. Um, his turnover rate, he doesn't turn the ball over very much, which is, you know, there's, there's value in that. Um, I do think, you know, it, it's, it'll be interesting to see kind of where he lands. He's still a young player. You would have means to think he's only, I think he's only 23 years old. You would imagine that um, there's somebody out there that might take a look at his whole profile and, and, you know, his, um, his skills and, and his upside and, um, and just sort of say, um, you know, well, let's 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 put him on our bench and, and see if we can get something out of him. But you even, I mean, to your point about his college career, even when he was at Indiana, you, you sort of looked at him and you just, I think the NBA likes to think of players in terms of elite tools. You know, what what what? How many? Is there anything that you do? at an elite or close to elite level from an NBA perspective. And then how, how many different things are there? You know, you're shooting, your ball handling, even things as specific as, you know, one of the, 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 the big pluses for Trace Jackson Davis is always his, his second jump ability or his second leap ability, which is everybody leaps to block a shot or reach for a rebound. Let's say, nobody gets the ball, who's the first person back up off the floor? Because everybody goes back down. Who's the first person back up off the floor? And Trace Jackson Davis is elite at that. And that can get you a lot of rebounds, a lot of caroms, a lot of deflections, maybe the extra, you know, sh block shot here and there. You always kind of wondered, like, what what are the skills that Romeo brings that are just absolutely elite? And it, it is hard to pick one out now that you've seen him in the NBA. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody – picks him up. Um, uh, he's also, you know, obviously going to be affordable at a certain level because he's still young. Um, but yeah, it, it'll be just kind of interesting to see where his career goes from here. Uh, yesterday, we had a chance to speak with Malik Renew, the first uh, Indiana basketball player the, for the uh, upcoming season on the roster that we've spoken with. And I, I said this earlier, the, the thing that stood out to me is how poised and how, he just sounded so much older than a year ago. Uh, not that he didn't sound that way. I mean, that, that he sounded young or childish last year. It was just that he just, his answers were all full. Uh, they were just all good of substance, good substance. And I was just impressed with how he, he just seemed like he had grown in, in this last year. Yeah, I think, you know, one thing that can be really clarifying for players is is when teammates leave and they look around and you know to some extent i would imagine that um you know he looks at it and he'll say something like you know 
we brought in some other big men. I got to up my game. You know, I'm not guaranteed anything. You know, it, it, it was Indiana put Malik Renew in a really favorable situation last year. He was obviously a good player. He had some really good moments. He offered a ton of promise. And yet you could also sort of slide him in behind not just race or Trace Jackson Davis, but also race Thompson. And even to some extent, Jordan Geronimo for portions of the season. And sort of protect him where you needed to if he got in foul trouble or if a matchup wasn't great for him or, you know, whatever. I mean, you think about like, for example, that uh, was it the was it the Minnesota game? I'll look it up while we're while we're talking. Where I, I think he scored a ton of points in the first half and then they kind of just didn't put him in in the second half. And the reason that they <clears throat> more or less admitted that um, that they didn't, you know, yeah, he played. He scored ten points in twelve minutes and basically more or less everyone kind of admitted that the reason they had him out in the second half was Minnesota was switching everything and they just didn't think the matchups were great for him. Um, My point here is, you know, you're able, that's a, that's a great situation to sort of bleed a freshman in and and let him find his feet and all that. But then there will also come the time. And and I think it's possible. It's that that time has come a little bit for Malik Renault, Malik Renault here where he looks around and he says, okay, all those guys that were in front of me are gone. And, you know, Xavier Johnson, Trey Galloway, those guys, they're the, they're the leaders of the team. They're the leaders of the backcourt, but you know, we brought in these, these young guys that could be really good, but I'm looking around and I'm the guy everybody needs to speak up. I'm the guy that needs to explain from a big man's perspective, why we do this or how we switch this or what our coverage is for this situation or whatever it might be. And that doesn't mean Malik Renew's got to have all the answers. He's still only a sophomore, and, and he's, there's going to be moments, you know, trust me, we're, there's going to be moments where it, it still feels like he's a sophomore. But um, I think that <clears throat> I think the the thing that, you know, to, to your point about kind of your observation that he, he just seemed a little bit more sort of comfortable and maybe mature, that stuff can clarify really quickly for a player when – they do look around and they say, okay, there's, you know, it's on me now. There's, there's nobody else to take. If I don't do this, nobody else will essentially, you know, there's, there's nobody else to take this up. I got to go do it. And I think maybe he's, he's, uh, I think he's, he's maybe, you know, kind of grabbing that, that mantle as much as he feels like he can. Yeah. Mike Woodson has definitely sat down with Malik and, and, and said, Hey man, you're, you're gonna, your role's different this year. You're, Trace Jackson Davis is gone. Race Thompson is gone. There are other guys that are here, but they're not guys that have been here for four years. And so, and it just seems like he has taken that to heart, uh, whether it's the challenge or the opportunity, but that has got, for fans, that has to be very exciting uh, because of knowing what kind of a talent he is, uh, because that says to me that, man, he's not only is he accepting that, but he's looking forward to that challenge. Yeah, and again, I mean, the, the, the flip side to talking about the extra responsibility is Malik Renew also gets to look at it and say, well, now there's a ton of minutes for me. If I can stay on the floor, if I can stay out of foul trouble, you know, then there's there's all kinds of, you know, there's all kinds of minutes out there that, you know, Trace Jackson Davis played like the second most minutes of any Big Ten player last season um, or the second highest percentage or something like that. It was, yeah, it was the second highest percentage of minutes. I think like Jalen Pickett was higher. Well, he's gone, and so that means not just his minutes are, are open, but his shots are open, his rebounds are open, all those different kinds of things. And Indiana will use Malik Renew differently. He's a different kind of player. There's a variety of ways in which you look at, at Malik Renew and say, you know, he's, he's not Trace Jackson Davis, and you're not going to expect him to be. But he can look at that, you know, the, he can look at this and sort of say, well, there's, there's the, you know, there's the, uh, the obligation or the responsibility to step into more of a leadership role, to be a little bit more vocal, to be a little bit more present, whatever. Um, but then there's also the opportunity of if I can get better, if I can vary my own game, if I can keep improving, you know, my, my offensive game, my pick and roll game, how I can work in, in transition, obviously, again, staying out of foul trouble, then there's a ton of minutes out there for me that, I know my head coach is going to find and, and uh, um, you know, that that's, that's going to give me the opportunities that I want. 